the main reason that Allah created the human being was to get to know him. He says in the Quran, A'udhu Billah Min Shaitan Ar-Rajim, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ جِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That we only created mankind and jinn in order to worship me. And the famous commentator Ibn Abbas mentions that it means in order to know me. That we only created mankind and jinn in order to know Allah. This is an experiential knowledge. A knowledge that as we go through life, as we go through the ups and downs, as we go through the adversities and the good times, we begin to experience Allah in our lives and get to know different traits about Him. The traits of Ar-Rahman and, Ra- Ar- and Ar-Rahim. The traits of Dul Jalali wal Ikram. The various names that Allah has that manifest as attributes and that manifest as experiences in our life. But the more and more we begin to know Allah, the more and more we also begin to achieve a state of inner peace and inner happiness. But the heart, as Allah says in the Quran, the only thing that will matter on the day of judgment is to have a sound heart, a qalb salim. And this heart is the vessel, it's the organ, it's the spiritual organ which helps us to either know Allah or to get distance from Allah. The more that we go through life, the more that the heart either collects rust or it begins to be purified. One thing that we have to understand is that our various experiences in life will influence the state of our heart. A certain sin that you and I do could put a black spot on the heart. A certain negative experience or a certain type of difficult experience has an emotional impact on the spiritual heart. Different. Yeah, it's stopping, uh, if we stop worshipping Allah, for example, the heart begins to collect rust. And Allah mentions in the Quran that their hearts have rust on them. And so Allah is trying to teach us that everything we see, everything we hear, everything we say will have some impact on the heart. There will be some negative or positive impact. There's no neutral. They're either ascending or we are descending in some way, shape or form. Now, many of these images, though, that the heart takes on, many of these experiences that the heart takes on, they might come early in our life, and then they negatively or positively impact us as we continue to progress in life. And so they can prevent the heart from recognizing Allah. A barrier can be formed between you, between me, and Allah. A cloudiness can form in the heart. Just like right now, we have a cloudiness and a windiness that is here. And just like 40 minutes ago, it was sunny, and then before that, it was rain. Uh, there was some rain, right? The, the various seasons that happen in the world, they're also a metaphor for the types of seasons that you and I are going to experience in our life. But the, the more cloudiness that there is, the more of a barrier there is between us and the bright light of the sun. The more cloudiness that there is between us and Allah, the more of a barrier there is between us and the light of happiness, the light of tranquility, the light of trying to achieve a state where we actually feel calm and good and spiritually close to Allah. And these are impacted. This cloudiness is impacted by the experiences that we have. Now, when we go through our day, there are two categories of good deeds or bad deeds that you and I can do. There are things that are just between you and you and Allah, and then there are things that are between you and people. So the things that are between you and Allah, let's say we're talking about sins that we might commit between us and Allah. Someone looks at something haram, they uh, you know, drink, or they might smoke, or they might eat something that they shouldn't be eating. These are any number of sins that are going to have a negative impact on the heart, and a sincere toba can cleanse these sins. A sincere toba, sincerely repenting to Allah, apologizing and saying, I'm sorry, will begin to cleanse these sins. And then there are the issues that happen between you and me, between people, between family members, between friends. The heart is impacted in a very different way by these types of issues because if that person doesn't forgive you, or if you don't forgive that person, or if that relationship is not mended, the heart will hold on to these issues. And these become major blocks on our path. And they ring and ring inside until we resolve them. Or they block us from achieving a state of nearness to Allah. And so maybe we had a major falling out with somebody. Maybe it was with our family members. Maybe it was with our spouse. Maybe it was with our siblings or cousins or friend or someone like that. And we're still holding on to something deep down inside. We say, oh, I forgave them. But deep down inside, we haven't forgiven them. We haven't, we haven't let go. 
We feel uneasy around that. There's a certain type of negativity, a negative energy, a darkness that we feel when we're around that person or when that person is around us or when we think of that situation which caused this risk. What happens then? Right? A certain type of trauma begins to form in the human being. Emotional trauma is a very, very real thing. Maybe we had a rocky relationship growing up with our parents. There was a lot of fighting. There was a lot of problems. Maybe you said things that you shouldn't have said. Your parents said things they shouldn't have said. There was tension. And that created a certain type of trauma. Or maybe our marriage is, is in that type of situation where there's just, it's never peaceful. There's constant bickering of some sort. There's a tense relationship. Or maybe we have that with other people in our life, our cousins or our family members or our friends. That's going to start to have an impact on you spiritually, but it's also going to have an impact on you and I physically. That many of the health issues that we face, according to traditional views of medicine, mention that when you have a certain type of negative experience, a negative relationship, a damaging relationship that's causing stress, that's causing anger, that's causing resentment, it manifests in your body. It manifests in health issues. It manifests in energy blockages that prevent the body from functioning at its optimal capacity. This common sense would tell you that that's, that's also the case, but this stuff has been studied and you and I have experienced it in our life. When we're stressed, we don't feel the same. We feel different. We can't sleep. We might not be able to function the same way throughout the day. Now imagine someone who's carrying stress from an incident that happened or a trauma from an incident that happened for 10, 20 years and they haven't let it go. Imagine the type of negativity that could impact you just from an emotional point of view, let alone from a spiritual point of view. And then what starts to happen here? When you and I beef with somebody, allow beef with somebody, when we have an issue with someone, when we have a grudge, it begins with this anger. And Imam al-Ghazali, he describes this beautifully in the Ahya al in his book on anger. He says it starts with something that causes anger. You have a disagreement with somebody. How could they do this to me? How could my parents say this? How could my sibling say this? Right? How could my spouse say that? And it just starts with you're upset. And then it doesn't get resolved because nobody was the bigger person. No one said sorry. Or if someone did say sorry, it was superficial and we didn't really, didn't really you know, resolve the situation. And then he says, what, what does it result in? It results in, eventually you start forming a resentment towards that person, a negative feeling towards that person. You don't want to be around them. You don't want to say salam to them. You don't want to you know, get up when they walk in the room. You don't want to reply to their call. You don't want to reply to their text. You don't want to virtually Zoom with them because that's all we can really do these days. You don't want to do anything. You don't want to see them. You, don't want to, you block them on your social media. You don't want anything to do with them. But you say, no, 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 it's cool. I've forgiven them. That's not forgiveness, right? Because there's something was there's something there. So he says anger turns into resentment. And then he says that actually turns into if unresolved, it turns into hatred. And you begin to hate that person. You begin to really feel a negativity towards that person. And if it's somebody who you have a kind of a loving, forced relationship with, let's say a family member, that hatred might manifest in a very different way. You just kind of hate being around them. But you've got to force, you've got to pretend to kind of like them still, but you can't stand them, right? And it results in damages later, later on in life. Someone has an issue. I know people who have major issues with their parents. And they, they have, like, you know, a kid. And they can't even stand their parent coming to be with their child when they're a baby. Or watch their child. Or come and be there with them for the delivery. Because of the negativity of problems that happened that were left unresolved. Right? Growing up. And if there's issues on both sides, right? It's not always just one person. Somebody had a problem and that resulted in a grudge, it resulted in, in anger, and then it resulted in resentment, and then it resulted in hatred. And now what happens? This is what's important and what I want to get to. One or two of those problems, they start to take over your worldview. Because the way the heart works is corruption from one category messes up all of your categories. You, you and I cannot compartmentalize our spirituality. Many Muslims do this. They compartmentalize. So like, they're all good when it comes to praying in the masjid. Meanwhile, outside being rude, arrogant, you know, not obeying, like, you know, like not obeying the rules with regards to, to masks and social distancing, thinking they can do whatever they want, right? Just, just having a very different attitude. Meanwhile, when it comes to certain types of worship, we're all about it. Compartmentalization of spirituality is not spirituality. The Prophet Sallallahu said, the best of you are those who are best in character. That deals with action. So spirituality is an inward phenomenon that manifests outwardly. So when you and I have a very negative relationship with somebody, or if we're doing something that's between us and Allah, that's haram, for sure it's going to impact other areas. For sure it's going to impact other areas. 
people who struggle with drug problems or struggle with alcohol or struggle with pornography, they don't have the same type of uh, uh, calmness and the types of uh, positive relationships that people who don't have those. But that's just without not even that's just without a spiritual aspect to it, right? And then you find spirituality. Of course, they're going to have a damaged relationship, right? Their heart is going to be damaged, and then that manifests in other ways. All of their worldview is then influenced by those sins and those relationships that have been damaged. And so what starts to happen to this situa in, in this situation? You and I have different traits that, we, that can impact us and that can take us over. Different parts of our soul that influence us. Imam Ghazali, he describes a whole kind of inner world that you and I have running and going on. But for the sake of time, we won't get into all of that. One of the traits he describes is you and I have what's called a dog soul. Imagine like a part in us that can be good or it can be guided towards evil. It's called the irascible faculty in, uh, in other kind of works. This faculty, this dog soul, they're not talking about like a cute little puppy dog. They're talking about like a very, very vicious, evil dog that the more you feed it anger, the more it manifests corruption inside of you. And then the more its worldview is an angry worldview, the more its worldview is a worldview filled of grudges and hatred and problems. And then whatever position that person is in, in their family, or in society, or in a job, that negativity will manifest with them, and it will carry with them. If it's something small, it'll just influence that, it'll feed the dog in a small way. But if it's something big, it feeds them in a big way. And you and I have all heard the sayings, hurt people, hurt people, right? When you have been hurt some emotionally or physically when you're young, you will manifest that stuff if it's not cured and it's not taken care of when you and I are older. But there's actually many studies that show that people who commit some of the most heinous crimes when they get older are people who had very, very significant problems. Some type of verbal or physical, sexual, or other types of abuse when they were younger. So we have to keep in mind that the issues that we have, we got to resolve them. Because otherwise, they won't impact the person. Sometimes we think like, man, this person said this to me, I'm never going to speak to them again. And we think that it's somehow hurting that person if we're holding a threat. No, it's hurting you. It's hurting you and me. It's, it's affecting our sleep. I know somebody who has had a major falling out with a family member of theirs, with their child. And they told me, like, I can't sleep at night. And I tried to ask them, like, you know, why don't you fix it? Why don't you resolve? Why don't you apologize? They're like, no, he should apologize to me. I'm the older one. And it was like, yo, he's immature. He might not apologize to you. You got to do it. It's affecting your sleep. It's affecting your health. It's affecting your spirituality. It's affecting all of these things, right? But sometimes we don't have the courage to go and say sorry to resolve these things and it's going to affect us negatively. And we want to try to have a situation where we have a sound heart between us and Allah and between us and other people. Alhamdulillah. اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تمنتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون. So all we need to do to start this process is just think first and foremost. What do I got between me and someone else? What kind of relationships have been damaged? And alhamdulillah, we're, if, if, if something has not been damaged, we're in a really, we should be really grateful. Alhamdulillah, we don't have major tension between us. And if we're young, we should make a commitment to not let that type of, have that type of approach. To not hold grudges against people and hold things against people and get into fights and situations. Getting into fights is not the biggest deal in the world. We're all going to fight with someone or another, fight with our spouse, to argue. That happens. But it's when you don't resolve it is the problem. Right? It's not the issue. It's the lack of resolution that we have to figure out. So start to think through, okay, what is the problem here that I have? And then look at who do I follow? Who is my leader? Who is my role model? Right? You study certain families. For example, there was a, you know, a book that, went, that, that uh, described the details of the Trump family. And you just look into that. And I didn't read the book, but I read the, you know, some of the synopses. And it talks about major broken family, major fighting all the time, so, like, problems between the siblings, problems between the parents, all of these different types of issues that manifest. And then you can see you know, how those problems manifest. Right? We don't need to explain that. But we have to look, who's our role model? The Prophet Sallallahu And what did he do? You had people who threatened his life, who tried to assassinate him. Family members of his, his own uncle, who was uh, uh, literally trying to do anything possible to make his life a, a living uh, problem, right? 
everybody in, in Mecca at some point. So many people were against him. But what did he do when he entered Mecca? He could have literally like captured all the people, put them in, in, in jail, and had them dealt with, right? There's a lot of things he could have done. I mean, he's entering Mecca as the conqueror. We're talking about Fetz Mecca when he enters again after, um, when, 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 when he's entering now as the, as, as the, as, uh, after he's lived in Medina, right? But what did he say? He says, no, he forgave everybody on that day. He said the same thing Yusuf alayhi salam said when his brothers finally came back to him after all of the problems that they caused him, they had to throw him in a well, tried to kill him, all these things. And he finally saw them later when he was in a top position in Egypt. And he says, you're forgiven. There will be nothing held against you today. He forgave them a serious, proper forgiveness such that that is an ayat in the Quran. The words he said were earned in such a high degree with Allah that they're an ayat in the Quran. So now think about it. These, these are our role models, right? The Prophet Muhammad wouldn't hold on to grudges. He, he just wouldn't. He wouldn't hold on to grudges. He wouldn't hold on to things between him and other people, right? And we might say we are not the Prophet Muhammad. That We know that. But we have to aspire to try to act like him in some way, shape, or form. And then let's at least begin the process of forgiving. And Allah says, He calls it an amazing thing. He says, in Surah Ali Imran, And those who restrain themselves. He says, قَادِمِينَ الْغَيْتِ وَعَفِينَ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبَّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ That those who restrain their anger and they pardon people. They pardon people. They forgive people. They let stuff go. Allah loves those people who are constantly virtuous, who are trying to inspire to excellence. So the last thing I just want to mention is that you and I, we have issues between us and Allah. We have sinned in certain ways. I can't think of a single person who would say that they don't want Allah to forgive them. We all want Allah to forgive us. If you want Allah to forgive you, forgive someone else. Be a forgiving person. Be a merciful person. Be a pardoning person. We say in Ramadan, may Allah allow us to reach Ramadan and make it a beautiful Ramadan like, like they used to be and let us pray together, inshallah. But we say, Allahumma innaka afuun kareem kareem but afu 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 anna. That, oh Allah, you love to pardon. You love to erase. Just for, like, forget, like, literally forgive and forget. So do that for me. Pardon all my sins. Pardon what I've done. Erase it. Let's do the same in our relationships. Let's do the same with grudges. Let's do the same. Let's make a commitment as we enter into this new uh, year that we're going to forgive people. We're not going to hold on to things. People who we've resolved, who we have issues with from the past, we're going to make an intention to resolve them. We're going to go and say sorry. We're going to go and fix it. We're going to be the bigger person. The Prophet Sallallahu said that the bigger man, is, the stronger man is not the one who, you know, Jack, you say Jack is, you know, the one who can out-wrestle somebody else. Not the one who's muscular, but the one who's able to hold their anger. What is the sign of holding anger? It means that you can forgive. Because if you can't forgive, it means the anger is still there. Don't let your dog's soul, that inner dog, that negativity, outrule the positivity. You and I have positivity in us. Because we are Muslim, we say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. We have that positivity, channel that positivity, and use it to wipe out the negativity in our relationship and the problems that we have. In Allah, wa malaika, so you salun ala nabi. Ya ayuhal ladhina amin, salu alayhi wa salim wa salim. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alayhi wa sahbihi salim. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى 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 محم